What up, what up, what up? It's Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. You can catch us here on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, or whatever, wherever you stream your podcast. Chopping it up about music, marketing, and the monies. Because that money part is important. Now, some advice. That's where we like to start. I don't even know whether we can call this advice. We probably just have to stop calling stuff advice. I'm just going to play a hard clip that y'all have to take. And 50 Cent. All regularly <laughs> scheduled guest. Yeah, that's why I need to be called. Call, hey, man, 50, we need you on here, man, for an episode. He he got some more gems for y'all. I think this is from his audio book, like that last clip. And good bo- good goodness. All right, I'm going to just go ahead and play this clip. And artists, this might hit home for some of y'all. I don't even know how to tease this, but I'll say this. Adapt or die. All right? Adapt or die. Another time I sat down with him. Just when IG was starting to pop off and tried to drop this gem on him. You got to get on Instagram. I encouraged him. You can be a little awkward in person. So this is actually a better way for you to communicate with people. By the way, he's talking about Lloyd Banks, right? Because he said IG unit, Lloyd Banks was a part of it. He's talking to Lloyd Banks in this clip saying you got to get on Instagram. Nah, I don't want to do what he said. Why not? You can literally put punchlines under your pictures, make some new fans. Nah, that's corny, he told me. Before adding Biggie and Pac didn't do that. They're dead, my man, I told them. They died before this stuff was even invented. And how do you know they wouldn't be posted on IG if they were alive? It was a line of thinking that really blew my mind. It suggested that if Tupac was alive, he'd still be wearing leather vests and red bandanas tied around his head, <laughs> sending girls his beeper number. Or that Biggie would still be wearing Coogee sweaters and playing Mortal Kombat 2 every night. It's ridiculous. When Banks made that comment to me, I realized he had gone as far as he can go. In fact, my exact thought was, this is someone I can't invest another minute or dollar in. Realize he had gone as far as he could go. Man. I'm so damn happy to see that there's somebody that goes through this like 50 cent. Actually, I'm actually more mind blown than happy. For real? I'm mind blown that 50 cent at 50 cents level Maybe because Lloyd is closer to a peer than just being like, you know, yeah. talking to a random up- upcoming artist. Yeah. But it's like, you're not listening to 50 Cent, what 50 Cent has done. And you're on that level. You already have some level of success. And this is the exact same conversation that artists have when, oh, she try this platform called t- t- uh, TikTok. Oh, no, TikTok corny. I don't want to be like that. And all the people I looked up to didn't do that. Jay-Z didn't have to do that coming up. This is real comments that I remember coming. It's yeah. like, Jay-Z blew up in the 90s. <laughs> what did 50 Cent have to literally say? It's like, bro, like, Tupac wouldn't have been out here sending girls his beeper number weird. <laughs> so, like, it's, it's, it's just not the same. It makes zero sense. But to know that conversation went exactly, literally exactly like it goes when we have it. Not just someone being, you know, resistant. <laughs> But having to give the same examples and the fact that they insert random artists who blew up in the past as their defense. Yeah. Bruh. That's mind blowing, bro. Sometimes successful artists will give the same stupid excuses as the smaller artists. It's genuinely like, because you think the gap, the gap would straighten that out. That's the kind of shit that <laughs> make me wonder the classic question. How did you look at it like what? Thinking like that, but then 50 to his defense. Right, Fifty has said this kind of stuff about them all at his, like again and again. Yeah, about Buck, Bo, uh, Lloyd, and you know, all of them really. Yeah, like, yeah. hey man, I I tried to kill these guys, and then I had to stop investing. That's the bigger part, right mm-hmm. there. Right, he said, "Yo, he's gone as far as he can go." And that, that part is like deep. Yeah, like he was kind of hurt, bro. Like he didn't want to leave him back there, but it's like, my God, let you go, bro. You're not willing to make an Instagram, dog. Uh, it's, 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 it's so simple. It's so just not even willing to make it. He even gave him the formula. He said, bro, just post some pictures with some bars on it. Which, you no, know, very simple formula for what I'm assuming was probably like 2016, 2017, you know, somewhere in there. But you probably go look at his Instagram. I'm about to go see him. I'm about to look at Lloyd Bang Instagram, bro. Don't let him be on Instagram now. Uh, yeah. Don't let him be on Instagram today. There he is. Oh, he verified and all that stuff, huh? How many followers does he have? Because it's like we always say, man, you can fight. Oh, 793. 793,000 followers. He still ain't using it great, though. 
It's like you can fight consumer behavior and what the people want. You can fight it all you want, but eventually that shit gonna win because it's just gonna keep evolving and getting bigger. Yep. And then eventually it becomes so so uh so monumental that you have to break and be a part of it. It's, we watching the same shit go with TikTok. How many people did we see in 2019, 2020? I ain't never gonna make a TikTok. Look at some motherfuckers now dancing. Oh, <laughs> damn, bro. Here I come. <laughs> Let me go on and make my page. <sighs> but the shitty thing about it, like, um, 50 Cent fight thing is like, man, you're kind of too late, bro. Like, you know? Yeah. I mean, he, only reason he's not, yeah, exactly. There we go. The cat. It's like, you Lloyd Banks, so you're going to always have an audience there, right? Yeah. But it's like, that shit probably didn't hit like it hit when 50 was trying to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's the moment where you can get newfound fame, mm -hmm. right? Because you're early, so you're going to get more attention because of who you are already. But then you get new attention because you're already one of the strong leaders on that platform. Yeah. It's the same shit that Jason Derulo did when you think about it. Takes out, yeah. Right? Yeah, sure. He was already Jason Derulo, but Jason definitely went to another level. And then them bags that he was getting from the sponsor deals, that alone, like, right. he was getting like 30 to 80 racks, like, better than show money. You know what I mean? For short videos. Yeah, right. And it's like, and the platform fucks with you heavy because of it. Like, yes. the platform, like, you get in bed with this tech giant really early. Yes. Just from being one of the few oh, people to help. It's like the Snoop Dogg, the Snoop Dogg thing. When Snoop Dogg yeah. talked about how him hopping on Instagram early led to them fucking with him and helping him do shit, bro. Yep. It's like, why? Who, do, who doesn't want a tech giant? You know what I'm saying? Because what's <laughs> good for you is what's good for me right now. That's, you want to be like, look, man. Lloyd, that's that's tough, but I am I am so grateful to hear this snippet because I feel like if artists can not only just hear this coming from Fifty Cent, I think it's more powerful to hear it coming from Fifty Cent talking about Lloyd and then seeing how history plays out, mm -hmm. right? Insert yourself. Insert <laughs> yourself. Just check that shit out, man. Because <laughs> man, Fifty did sound her at the end, but as I'm saying, bro, like I am, I want to let you go, man. Like I let you go, I gotta leave you. I gotta leave you because I gotta keep going. And when that person gives up in the movie, like that, they're like, "Come on, without me." They're like, "You don't gotta die here, man." Yeah, fifty was like, "All right, bet." <laughs> you know, right, you was up out of there. <laughs> now, with that said, we got another topic because record labels are using bots. They are using bots, or not? Our record labels using bots now. So many people have said that record labels are using bots. We've talked about many people in the industry using bots. However, there was a specific instance, maybe it's been two months ago now, where Atlantic Records, many oh, yeah. artists off of Atlantic Records yeah. were outed, yeah. right, for their bot usage, which I don't think that's fair, man. You know what I mean? Aren't you not supposed to out people, bro? You can't just be putting All right, But it wasn't like, it was like a, a little, I saw the Instagram page that did I watched it from ground zero happen, bro. All I'm saying is yeah. today, <laughs> you can't out people. I feel like people at uh, mid-tier music industry and up, we all get it. Like, below mid-tier and below, bro, like, underground, they don't respect it because they don't get it, bro. They're not playing the same game. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm, I'm, look, I'll just fuck with y'all, but look. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the artists that suffer. That's the biggest part about it, though. Like, y'all think y'all talking. The artists don't know some of this time, some of these times. Yeah, but let's, right. let's talk about why we're bringing up this subject. Shout out to K.I. She is a Brand Man Network member. If y'all don't know about Brand Man Network, well, it's where we put our marketing strategies that we use for many of the artists that we've helped break, songs that we've helped break over the years, and we put it in there for absolutely free. Go to brandmannetwork.com to get some of that information while we have it free for everybody, but completely free courses and community. Check it out. Now, Kay, what did she say? She said, yo, record labels are using bots to fuel artists streams do you guys think bots are slowly starting to become a secret mandatory tool of the mainstream music industry to ensure high streaming numbers yes i think that is but atlanta records denies using bots for any of its artists now i think there's a complicated question in some ways right because i wouldn't be surprised if atlantic records was not using bots they're like some third party marketing agency that all right or something right yeah but not even just that because i would be would not be surprised if it wasn't even an employee at atlantic records you know what i mean yeah. using the box yeah because we already know how many of these record labels use us yeah right just for regular marketing activity all right so do they have a bot farm on staff no 
I would be surprised if you could be at the record label and not know. The highest motivation is the artists themselves and their teams. Yeah. There's a lot of artists that don't know that the label's using bots or their manager got some bots you used or their, uh, re- not the record label, or their marketer might have even been finessed a little bit and did some bots. But there's also, let's be real, there's actually a lot of artists that know yeah. that bots are being used yeah. 1,000%. They, they encourage it. Well, they encourage it, right? They, <laughs> you know, they don't get too deep into the trenches with it, but they have some conversations that, hey, What's up? Can you get your get your man's that that do what he do? Give that extra hundred hundred k, right? <laughs> so, and we talked about this in our bot video before. Yeah, but just to add to it, I have another even an, another scenario to make it clear why bots do make sense in the mainstream. So, I've talked about how you literally might have a million streams. I'm making up a number, right? But you have a million streams and Unless you get 2 million streams in the next 30 days, you might not have access to the next $100,000 of your budget based on the way the record label is set up and the way they have incentives or just the way they move. Because you have to make things move in a certain period of time. There's people who are going through scenarios like that, right? I know that I was having a conversation with somebody recently who was talking about the way the radio works, right? Okay. Oh, and yeah. okay. they had paid the money that they paid to get things popping on radio. Song went pretty damn high, right? Let's just say 40s on the radio charts, the specific one they were talking about. Now, they already said the difference between, let's just say 44 and 40 is a lot of money and a decent amount of um, streams and everything. Point is, they got the song popping on the radio by paying on the radio and getting that marketing visibility. But even radio today, even if it's popping and performing well on radio, says, yo, what that streaming do? So to get it to the next level and take it to the rest of the markets, you can't just have good performance on the radio. You have to be performing on the stream or on the streams as well. Otherwise, it's not going to get clear because I guess it's like a quality control check or something i i I don't where is so it can't be completely gamed musically i mean off of money i don't know but what would i do in that scenario oh i would say well shoot i just paid for my artist to get here and i just need to pay thirty thousand dollars because i already just paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars to get it to this point (laughs) or however much i paid i might as well spend another thirty thousand dollars so it can go to the next notch and get paid yeah i'm gonna get sent to like 100 more stations or whatever that number looks like yeah so there's incentives where in the game there's going to be plenty plenty of people using some formation of bots always because it just doesn't make business sense not to and just like what marketers do all the time to- all, all the time is yes we know marketing isn't guaranteed in terms of the result that it can get but we want to control as many variables as possible to put in the best chance of success. Yeah, that's why, that's, like you said, that's why I get it, bro. It's like, it's about social proving. Like you just said, bro, all these different entities who won't even give you a chance in some aspects because you don't, the numbers don't look a certain part. Yeah. And then I think what people need to understand, bro, is people have been finessing in music since, since the dawn of time, bro. There's, there's a new finesse every music generation. Yeah. Like my mentor told me about, you know, how they would buy their own CDs at venues and then have the venue owner sign off on this uh, account towards Billboard, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, they was doing this shit in like the, the 90s and 2000s, you know? There's always something, right? What's the difference between an artist doing a show and bringing out 30 of their friends to fill the crowd out so the rest of the crowd thinks they're lit, right? These 30 friends aren't really your, your music fans, you know what I'm saying? But they're convincing everybody else in the venue that you are someone that's worth paying attention to. Theoretically, is that not the same thing that you're trying to do with the boss, right? So I think, at least for me, that's how I've, I've kind of like justified it for myself and, and kind of made it make sense for myself. I'm only ever against bots for artists who do not yet have a marketing infrastructure, right? Because I don't want the artists listening to be like, okay, Shane, Corey, sound like I need to go run some bots. No, but Don Tolliver running bots around his album, it's not the same as Lil Who The Fuck, whatever running bots around his debut single that you know he put out to his 10 monthly listeners there's no marketing infrastructure there's not enough going on around you to where people will believe you right 
And the success of a bot campaign is all about the people believe you. Yes. Right? How blur is Drake runs bots? We believe it. It makes sense that Drake could have got, you know, two million extra views on this and that. That, that. that sounds like something that could happen. Right? Versus like if, like I said, Lil Who the Fuck, whatever, you got two million views in a day. Oh, cow. Ain't no way, bro. You got a hundred followers on Instagram. Yeah. You got 30 monthly listeners on Spotify. How you get two million views on this video? And, in a day and a half, right? So it all comes down to believability, right? And and how much of that can you, it actually make sense? We're gonna have somebody on to go deeper into the bot conversation. Yeah, we're so, by the way. Oh, we are? Yeah. Wait, did y'all use something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have them on uh, once we get into the, the, the vibe of doing the interviews and everything. But I'll say this, it's crazy, but it's one of the last conversations I had about bots. The guy was telling me about some significant shit. people doing some shit, right? <laughs> And he was telling me how much money people are making off of it, right? I'm not talking about the people who are doing the bot. I'm talking about the artists because you got to still think. If I give you a $1,000 to mm -hmm. give me X amount of views on YouTube, I'm still getting paid from that, from the content ID. Yeah. And that point, you basically, which is- Not content ID, but you know what I mean. Yeah, which is like, that's the part of it that I think regular artists need to understand why the negative bot conversation goes up. These labels and people are not against bots because they think the playing field should be fair. They're against it because of what you just said. Yo, these motherfuckers are basically robbing us. You know what I'm saying? It, You're going to pay this guy $1,000, and because that, he helped you make an extra 10 k from YouTube, extra 40 k from Spotify. You're basically robbing these platforms. You know what I'm saying? And bro. that's why they're against it. Not because they want the playing field to be even, bro. <laughs> you need to get a, get a fake artist page or something just a page just to give ourselves some views yeah. <laughs> i even care about the outcome of brand let me just give you just for this random page so i can make the money yeah. but, I, but you know a lot of the companies that are on that level they only deal with very high level clients right because of course you want to keep it hush hush as possible mm -hmm. um and when the people who are paying big are in control of it why even make doesn't even make sense to spread it across a whole bunch of different pages but john paul also on the Berman Net Network comments for this post said, no, ultimately bots can be discovered relatively easy. It's a matter of priority on the part of streaming platforms. So he's saying it's not worth doing bots or it's not going to become massive in the, the mainstream music industry. The problem is artists want to rely on algorithms to grow their fan bases. I understand the practicality and the appeal of that, but at this stage, the most important thing to focus on is creating better content and better music. Yes, that stage, that stage, proving the product does still work. So what's the point of focusing on something you can't control? Now you can't mm -hmm. control bot. So I thought you said about the algorithm. Oh, you can't. Oh, the algorithm, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Focusing on that, yeah. I get that. And that goes back to our conversation in that last episode. Yeah. All right. Now, Jeez, with that being said, I want to switch up the flow a little bit and get into a conversation. Well, we'll start with this simple question. Is this what the rap industry is really about? Because I don't think it's about music. The more and more we have these conversations, I don't think it's about music. Sad as it is, bro. And this clip, <laughs> add, added to the clip that we just had on the podcast, well, well I am. If y'all haven't seen episode 34, go watch episode 34. You're doing yourself dirty. This clip right here that we're about to play oh. is yet another <laughs> interesting, insightful clip. Shout out to the rap radar. <laughs> my dumb ass. Is that rap ra radar? It is rap radar, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. My dumb ass used to think it was about being dope. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized the music industry was designed to capitalize on artists. Mm. A lot of us just be making music and we be having fun. Mm -hmm. It just be fun. It be the homies. And then you attach the industry to it. Mm. The rap n is getting the least money off the rap. N 99 times out of 100. The drug dealer, the jeweler, the strip in the club, the publicist, the flight, the, 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 the airlines, the travel agent, the CEO of the label, the he, homies. He, he gonna put so many people, kids through school before he put his kids through school. Even a rapper that get a whole bunch of money from the industry directly, cash out, you cash out 30 million, 40 million for an hour. That's not just because you're so good at making music yeah. or that you're so good at making money. But, it's that you advertise to the audience a lifestyle that go along with 
what the industry, mm-hmm. yep. the industry trying to sell. The industry trying to sell liquor in the club. Yep. Mm-hmm. Tickets to the club. Yep. Tickets to the show. Yep. Like so, all this. You're the billboard. So if you go back to the things that Will I Am said, that music has always been used to sell something else. It's used to sell hardware. I want to sell my radio. Well, I'm going to use music as a marketing mechanism to make people want radio so they can hear this music, but not selling the music itself. Right. This actually alluded to that same thing. Right. On that part of it, he, he, he talked about other things, right? Like, all right, at first I just thought this shit was about being dope, actually being good at it. Nah. Right. Then we get into the marketing and brand and who's more of a talent or just all these other elements. So there's one part of, oh, it's not about necessarily the best talent or doing the coolest thing mm-hmm. that already sucks to hear from any artist. But when you get back to that point of, yo, you represent a lifestyle, all right? And the industry as a whole is pushing this lifestyle because if you aren't holding the bottles, all right? If you aren't holding the chains, then my industry dies, all right? A lot of times we think specifically, that's what I love about this. A lot of times we think specifically about the brand that we're touting at the moment. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh yeah, I'm not about to have Cristal because I don't want to, market Cristal. I'm not about to have De Leon because I don't want to market De Leon. I'm not about to wear a chain from Johnny or shout him out because I don't want to shout out Johnny unless I got a cut of these businesses. Ooh, I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. But then you go to that next level. Well, shit, if I just got you wearing a chain, drinking something, you know what I mean? Flexing some type of vehicle it's all going to come back to me at the end of the day. It's the same reason why you see McDonald's Wendy's, Burger King, all next to each other. Because, hey, bro, as long as people know this is the area I go to when I'm hungry, at some point, they're going to hit me on the block. Mm-hmm. I'm, one day, they're going to be like, ah, I'm tired of going to McDonald's. Let me get something different. Well, what's another option over there? So as long as we market this industry as a whole and grow the pie, we're all going to win. And again, it's one thing to think about the individual brand equity that you may or might may not have because of it. But it almost gets into that conspiracy side of things when you think about just pushing an idea and I want to market this lifestyle, not even on like an evil side of it, but just what am I encouraged, all right, and incentivized to allow to bubble to the top? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, that's why I, I, w- I want somebody that's done like, you know, research into what non-music industry the music industry is invested in you know what i'm saying you know there's that conspiracy of like them being deep in like the prison system i wonder if like some of these labels and things are like invested in liquor companies and maybe they have a lot of stock and gold and shit like that right and it's like hey we need to keep pushing any of these that they sell us i'm just thinking i'm just speculating i'm just wondering you know what i'm saying because it will make a lot of sense to me um and then some of it too i think is just the fans put those expectations on the artists hey bro like you don't drink you don't have no chains on you ain't got no cool car. You know what I'm saying? You fucking, especially in rap, bro. Rap fans are toxic. You know, rap fans, rap fans are easily the most toxic fans there are. So right. I think, but yeah, I think what I will hope that artists kind of take away from that is that I need to be conscious of who I can sell things to and what I would sell to them. Right. right. Because it doesn't have to be these things that we're talking about. I know that people are like, I don't want to sell liquor. I don't want to sell, but right. But like, even if you someone like a, um, we think about it. Like we talked on the last episode about how certain female artists are just better at, at selling products because they can monetize like every aspect of them, right? I can I can wear lashes, I can monetize my lashes, my nails, you know what I'm saying? The, the polish I put on, like things like that, man. Like you can always find something in your brand that you can sell if you're willing to look outside of the usual. You know what I'm saying? If you're not, liquor liquor chains, cars are gonna always be there for you, you know what I'm saying, especially if you're a rapper. But if you want to do something different, like the the world is kind of open enough and, you know, fans that kind of have enough um interest where you can monetize different things around them. Like I remember pitching the idea to a homie of mine um, about selling like custom skins for like PlayStation controllers because his fan base is really big in the gaming. And I'm like, bro, like just make some like $20 PlayStation skins, you know what I'm saying, sell them shits. Shit will go up. He never did it. So if somebody wants the idea, go for it. 
You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's like things like that, right? Like you have as an artist have to always remember at the end of the day, the industry su- respects, supports, and promotes the person that can sell shit. They don't care what you selling, but can you sell some shit? They sell something. Something, right? So if you can just prove, hey, I can sell anything: t-shirts, hats, stickers, kickball tournament tickets. You know what I'm saying? Um, and you can prove that that's speaking to whatever demographic, like. I mean, you'll you'll still get that. I think still get the same look. Just in rap, we just so used to that being like the big the big three: liquor, jewelry, cars. You know what I'm saying, um, but yeah, bro, like that's the also my big takeaway from the clip is like this shit is way more than than talent, bro. It's always gonna be about what's your brand, what's your look, who can you sell to, and then you know after maybe three or four other things that I can't think of right now, and then music. <laughs> See, this is why I always can't respect when people like to say stuff like music doesn't have any influence. All right. Yeah, no, that's like, crazy. Oh man, yeah, you know. Oh, there was a lot of negative music that I heard listened to and I love to listen to the drugs and the guns and all that stuff, but I don't do the drugs and the guns and all that stuff. Yeah, you might have had a structure that it didn't work for you, right? And you were able to not do certain things. However, on a macro, the numbers show it increases the yeah. behavior of whatever that is. And like whether we're talking about drugs or guns, whether we're talking about party, whether we're talking about twerking, like whatever it is it starts to affect every single thing else, yep. right? It's because it's marketing. That's how it works, right? Yep. Yep. It sensitizes and then encourages at the end of the day. So music is the perfect conduit to like hijack people into whatever space that we want to get them into, mm-hmm. right? And it made me think about cigarettes now there's something deeper. Maybe it was something else um, that I was actually trying to think of, but I found this about cigarettes where it said in 1940s, doctors were part of the original endorsers of cigarettes. Yep. Luckily, we had to convince people to yep. do this thing, right? So it said in 1940s, tobacco companies hired doctors and dentists to endorse their products to reduce public health concerns about smoking risks using slogans like just what the doctor ordered and more doctors smoke camels. Tobacco companies misled people, showing that physicians were also smokers and that cigarettes were fine for your health. All right. So we use one thing to bring people over to the other thing. All right. Same type of interesting mentality. Now, there's another thing. Yeah, they use celebrity endorsements, old um, film and things like that. Like, it looks so cool. Like, you, you see it all the time in old um, film. But what I found this was interesting. And this is in the 1990s, which is. Makes it even more interesting. Kids friendly characters. In the 1990s, tobacco companies introduced cartoon characters like Joe Camel to heighten tobacco's appeal for kids. The practice has since been banned, <laughs> but the deception still continues by means of fruity flavors and brightly colored tobacco packaging. Tobacco companies also use products and advertisements in stores and gas stations at direct eye level of children, <laughs> which, you know, I'm about to start paying attention to that. Not really. whatever. But it's like the, the current vape industry, bro. Have you ever looked at some of these vapes, bro, that motherfuckers be talking about? I remember seeing this guy with one, and when he hit it, it started, like, spinning at the end, and colors started flashing. I'm like, bro, that was not made for an adult, bro. That was made for kids, man. you know what I'm saying? Some, some impression yeah. with kids, but The tobacco industry is great at marketing, bro. I can't even lie. Yeah. They, they find a way every couple of years to, like, weave their way back into some shit. Because way- vapes is basically that yeah it was dying but vapes was a cool way to bring it back right, right. exactly and market the teenagers yeah exactly in the along the same story now i don't know how true and literal my dad means because sometimes i don't know bro means he say stuff so nonchalant you don't know if he's serious but i really do think he was serious because he never lies you just laugh kind of like adam and he was like what are you laughing at i yeah. think like but he said the reason he got into <laughs> oh boy he said he really didn't mess with smoking weed like that because, like, oh, niggas were doing it too often. All right? He was like, damn, I can't do this all the time. <laughs> so he had, to, like, he had to move on to something else. <laughs> and then when he said, <laughs> um, <laughs> cigarettes, the reason he started, because he wanted to learn how to do this trick. Like that. This man smokes to this day. But, yeah, it was like... He had, he, well, it was some guy that was like blowing some kind of circle. And he, of course, you got the circles that you blow the big circle, you blow small circles in between. It wasn't that. It was more like, I don't know, some kind of ongoing circle, which 
I don't know. Old cigarettes aren't really built for that. You have to be really talented. <laughs> they, you know, it's different. <laughs> Point is, if you think about this same type of marketing, <laughs> like kids or whatever, I don't know how old he was, but just like we do it. No, little simple, cool shit like that <laughs> can attract people, you know? So it's interesting and in that, and music is, I mean, it's just fertile ground for any version of making something cool and influencing something else. The artists are participating in the least of it. Yeah. Hip hop got smart first where we start saying, okay, we want the endorsements. We're bringing people this money. Steve Stout noticed that when Will Smith had the Ray-Bans on and there have been in black movie, the Ray-Ban sales went crazy. You know what I mean? Jay-Z started to notice some things and boycott all this great stuff but we still are a long way from even the understanding that music apparently right isn't it's 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 to be consumed but it's not for sale yeah which is a hard concept to get with because and i think we were in a newer generation, we're misled to thinking, oh, well, they were selling CDs, so music was for sale. But then when you break it down from the Will I Am concept and basically say, no, they weren't selling music, they were selling the CDs, and make that small differentiation, like, this goes back to, well, shoot, music right now is probably being consumed most like it. I don't want to say it's the value of music. The va Music is obviously valuable, right? But in some senses, the value of music has been showing truer than it ever has on the negative and positive side. Positive because we can track more of its usage, right? Positive because we can see how culture of music impacts other spaces. But the negative in terms of what will what consumers are really willing to pay for it. That price has technically always been the same. Yeah. I I was willing to buy that CD because I really wanted to hear this music, so I was able to jump over that barrier, but that changes when, when it was an album, that changes when it's an MB3, it changes with whatever it is, and I don't know, man, it's, 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 it's still something that I'm wrapping my head around. Again, I get the basic concept, but I feel like at one point it's going to, like, click, and it, it, there's something happening in my brain, bro. I'm, I'm telling I'm going to come back one day, and I'll just be like, Kurika. You ref, for real. <laughs> we need to flip X, Y, and Z, and I done I done hacked the game in the Matrix in a whole new way. But I, I I feel like I, you know, you start in the Matrix, then you can see the Matrix. Yeah, you know what I mean. But just because you can see the Matrix, don't mean you got hacked the Matrix. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people just be seeing the Matrix and don't realize that's not enough. Want to hack that shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Just wait on it. <laughs> Just wait on it. Now, next topic, though. Sales are extremely important when it comes to music or not. What do you think? Before we even get into it, what do you think? Yes. Do sales matter more than the music itself? That's a good question, man. No. I want to say no. My heart my heart, and the, the foresight into the comments wants me to say no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here it is. Academics explains why album number sales are important. Data responding to Lil Yachty's comment saying that we shouldn't focus on the numbers. Let's play this clip. Stop complaining about them, right? The numbers are what they are. And yes, the numbers do like contests, but the numbers are, the numbers will prove if you're doing something that's really special. It's the reason why, for example, nobody likes Nobody likes um, if the first week projection comes out and says you're not doing good, no one likes it. But if you're projected to do 50,000 after the first day and after the fourth day, you're projected to do 65,000. They love to point out the growth. Why? It shows that there's the numbers are going to highlight the fact that there's a change in the culture based on the music. And that's what the numbers do. The numbers is signify who's consuming it. Let me ask you this question, right? This inherent question that goes outside the music. How are we going to stop it at that before you get into the abstract question about the tree falling in the woods and stuff like that? I think there's one comment that's pretty clear. Dream Raheem says, 
artists love numbers and sales until they start falling off. Yeah, fast. Like yeah. artists love numbers when the numbers are high for them, or they're going up, and they don't, they don't like it when they can't play the game. Right. right? But right. that's why I say it's a weird line to walk. But I I think if you are entry level mainstream and, and the game numbers matter, if you are not or not trying to play that game, then numbers don't matter. You know. So. <sighs> for me. I mean, I think there's a couple things that by what academics said that, of course, could be fishy. You could say, well, what do the numbers really mean if somebody was using bots? Mm-hmm. What do the numbers really mean if it's about catching the algorithm and you have all these additional, like, actors, right, in the space? And I think that's where artists try to disconnect the judge of quality of music and numbers themselves, right? Mm-hmm. Which is understandable, but something that academics mentioned later on in this clip when we talk about the music business money numbers matter yeah. right? it goes back to that same point hey bro keep it to yourself keep it on your hard drive if you don't want to deal in the music business right or just share it with your friends and your and all that stuff don't think about growing from a music business standpoint and navigating that if you don't want to think about the numbers that's just one thing that comes with it all right it's why people fake numbers because they matter. I'm not even talking about that person who's just trying to appear bigger than who they are, but literally when we talk about charts and all these other things, yeah. they matter in waves, 100%, all right? Because you at least get to say that you had these numbers. I just saw a clip where 50 Cent in an interview was saying that, who did he use as reference? Future, all right? He said, yeah, I could perform my song today and it doesn't really matter how the crowd reacts by like, these songs are number ones right i can get paid certain things because these songs are number ones but somebody like future you might say oh yeah the streets rock with me more than hove right and they're playing my music more than hove music it's great because it's true in that way today but 20 years from now without the number one attached to it People aren't reacting the same. You don't get to say, well, at least this thing was a number one. You also can't flip it the same, mm-hmm. right? Because you can't say people are like people hire based off of those type of numbers because they want to look. Cause I, I want to, I'm a company and I want to say, oh, I had some random artist that performed or whatever and look at how cool we are and say, hey, he's a number one artist, right? You get those type of accolades. Not that Future's never had any higher charting things, but 50 was referencing those specific songs. So numbers, matter when we talk about real life Mm -hmm. period now art itself and your judgment of it no you shouldn't want it to matter in that way when you're talking